Mrs. Pike? You the one the line boss picked to go into town with me to get that consignment? Yep. Do you know if this train is on time? Well, it's usually not, but by the time we go down there, assess the load, figure out a way to get it back here to the spread, we'll have lost the light. There won't be enough light left to string it. We'll give it to hell tomorrow, though. Listen, do you know what this stuff is? I've never heard of it. Some call it the devil's rope or barbed wire. It let us put up more fences faster and they last longer, too. Why would anybody need any more fence? Well, it means we could take care of more cattle. We? You mean you and me? Why would we need any more livestock than we already have? My gosh, we used to be free. We used to be independent. We used to operate like independent businesses. Why are we supposed to string like? I guess that's the part I don't care for. I've seen it. Heavy twisted strains of wire with sharp points sticking out every couple of inches. It's meant to wound the livestock if they get too close. Of course. Say, were you in the war, kid? Yeah. My dad and I, we made it through Cold Harbor. Most didn't. Well, I don't know what you fought for, but me and mine, we fought not to section off the land. Well, how can I get paid for what I know how to do if I don't work for someone? You trust them? These ranchers, the people that own these lands? I don't, never have. But they need cowboys. And we need work. They will always need cowboys. Really? You sure? Huh. I knew you thought about that. You thought about when we wouldn't need cowboys. Ah, buffalo. Do you remember the buffalo? I've seen a few, but... You've seen a few. You've seen a few. Oh, you've seen now, a few. Now, wait a minute. What's with you? You got your pants in a twist? Or a natty of teeth or something? What the hell is the problem? You've seen a few. A few buffalo. Listen, I have to ask you, when was the first time you crossed the Mississippi River? After the war. You know, I'm from New York originally, right? Well, I told everyone when I first interviewed with the Henderson, I couldn't find a job after the Panic of 1873. They needed soldiers for the Indian War, so I came out then. Sometimes the Indians called us Buffalo Soldiers. Well, I had some relatives in the South then, Virginia. They stayed back, but not me. I needed work. So that means you crossed the big river maybe 10 years ago. I thought so. That means you don't know what it was like before you got here, and you won't know what it's like after it's all gone. What do you think a buffalo smells like? I don't know. A buffalo smells like a buffalo. I know you don't know. That's because there's so many answers. There's a smell when they're newly born, another when they die, uh, another when they're on the plains completely covered with snow, and there are sounds that go with those smells too. The sound of far off distant thunder, the sound of wind rustling through grass, and the sound that the animal makes when he's soaking wet out on the plains after a thunderstorm. I know you don't know those things. And what's worse yet, you never will. Well, 
I can say the same about you. The city of St. Louis. You ever heard of it? Yeah. I've been there once. Before they built the bridge? Since they built the bridge? What bridge? So you've never seen the bridge. It's huge, and it's graceful, and it's pretty in a way, and you've never seen it. I don't understand your point. I mean, I could still go to see it, and anybody who came after me could see it too, right? All right. But my point is, you didn't get to see it built, and I did. You didn't get to see or smell the fires that heated the river, hear the hammers, or just watch the structure grow piece by piece. And you'll never know that. And neither of us know what it was like to come upriver before St. Louis was there, before anything was there. So there's always going to be things people don't know anymore. You are deliberately not getting this. I am the buffalo. I am what is disappearing into the past, and I deeply resent it. I don't want to disappear into the past. You may not be a buffalo, but you will be. So this is the aging process? Years separate you from someone, now I can't never know things they knew? I know more than a few things, and I'm not stupid. Oh, I know you're not stupid, I know you're not stupid, but you can't ever know what you never knew. And memories are the point. Am I right? You've been talking memories of something, or the memory of process of something, I think. Yeah, let me try this tack. I feel like your old granny here giving you a lecture. <laughs> I think you've been with a woman, but more than one? Not that it's any of your damn business, but yeah, several, more than one. What of it? Well, I'm just trying this as an example. What did you actually know about women when you were a kid? Anything? I mean, I didn't know anything about men. Oh, I knew what was expected of women around men. They were supposed to be off to the side, silent, you know, dignified, like statues, but not people, waiting on other people, silent, but not people. And I pretty much thought the same thing about men, too. But then I met Tom Pike, and I married him. And then I knew. I knew. But I had to get to know men as people first, people who thought and felt and had opinions. Is this making any sense to you? Well, I know the first girl I kissed wasn't the first girl I was in love with, but I thought she was. Exactly. Try to describe the first time to somebody who's never been there, to somebody who's never danced the dance, and, well, you can't. Um, you can say what it's like, but not what it is, not what it is at all. This is where language fails to get at the magnitude of experience. Buffalo, the first time. These are abstractions. You still follow me? I'm not sure how we got from the opposite sex to Buffalo. Oh, it's a straight line in my mind. You know I got Indian blood in me, right? One grandfather's worth to be exact, one fourth. And he really knew everything. I paid attention to him all the time. He taught me about the trail and weather and how it could change all in an instant. And he taught me everything about life down to the smell of the dirt, the feel of the wind against my cheek, and how the clouds look when they cross the sky. He was the one who really, truly knew the buffalo. So that's how I knew the buffalo mostly, through him. But you were never him. You tell me you know the buffalo because of your grandfather. And then you tell me I would never know anything until I'm older. If that and this, it's not making any sense to me. Well, that's my point, essentially. Well, maybe we shouldn't be even talking about this. I don't know. I mean, no, don't stop now. You might as well finish. You already said something. I mean, what makes you different from me? What do you know that I don't know? Well, nothing that you can't learn. But do you really want to know about the, about the buffalo? I mean, what are the buffalo to you, really? You probably think of them as some great big cow, right? Be honest. Well, yeah. I heard some say it tastes better than beef, maybe better leather. What else are they? Life. 
when buffalo were so numerous out here, they were your world. They were so numerous, people thought they'd never end. The buffalo were everywhere. You know, the buffalo came very late into Native American culture, but when they came in, they gave all kinds of new definition, meaning new sets of traditions to the Indians. Even if they owned the new livestock that had been introduced, just trying to shift from one culture to another, it was just too hard on them because, you know, the buffalo were never supposed to end. But they did. They did. They did. And you can understand that, but you can't grasp how difficult it is for one set of traditions to be exchanged for another. I think that's beyond your thinking, isn't it? You think that they'll always need cowboys. I know you said that. I heard you say that. Okay, so tell me again about this wire we're supposed to pick up. Barbed wire? It's supposed to keep the livestock contained, keep them from wandering off. Well, what's the wire supposed to do? You know this lanyard? My husband gave it to me. He said it would keep me from falling off the horses. <laughs> Did it work? <laughs> no. I fell off so hard one time I broke my right leg. That's why I limp. You know, if he were here, I wonder what he'd be doing now. I like to wear it and think of him riding around on this cloud. If he were here, I wonder if he'd even be a cowboy. But there will always be work. There's always branding and getting beef to the market. Yeah, at some point, there will always be people to do this work, but you have to understand it won't always be us or people like us. All right. So there will never be people like us again. But you know what? You folks from the Hendersons pick up the consignment? Yeah, we are. Anything wrong? Train's late. They're minus the brakeman, and they've had trouble offloading at the past couple stations. I'm alone here right now, but I could have a couple guys here in a bit. It'd go a lot faster if you could help. Yeah, we will. And obviously, we'll wait. There will always be people who wait. Yeah, sure, we'll help. Hey, let me ask you a question. Since you have all the information, I assume you work the Telegraph here. How long have you been doing that? Two years. Best job I ever had. What about before? Well, after I got out of school, I worked on the river boats, Missouri River. But as soon as the trains came through, no more river boats. There, there's still a few yet, but um, they're not the future. So uh, railroads are the future? Well, that and this, a telegraph. You can send messages over long distances. You no longer have to write letters anymore. It's fast. It's amazing. That thing isn't the future. It is not the future. Then what is it? Anything at all? It's the now. It's what's happening right now. It's uh, current. There's somebody right now working on that thing that you love so much, that thing that you think so highly of to make it into the past. That's what's happening right now. This happens all the time. Take guns. My father gave, gave me this example. They used to take a gun and put powder and a ball in it, push it down inside, and you only got one shot. And you only hit something if you were lucky with that shot. Now, now we don't do that at all with a revolver. We load subsequent ammunition, repeat ammunition, bang, bang, death, bang, bang, and more, and more, and more. So, do you want to go back in time? There's a lot of dislikes here. I mean, what do you hate? Do you hate the revolver? The telegraph? Or do you hate the barbed wire? I mean, what do you hate? Maybe, maybe that's the question. Well, I think I know what I hate. I hate feeling like the buffalo. I hate feeling like I have to justify my life, justify living. I'm right here. Do you young people see that? I'm right here, I haven't even moved, and I can do things. And what happens if somebody comes to me one day and says, we don't want those jobs done anymore. This devil's rope, this barbed wire, do I hate it? You're damn right I hate it because once it's stretched across the face of the earth, it means one more thing that I love won't be there. You don't see that? Sure, we can see that. I think we just don't fear it. 
I know one day I will leave here and have to go somewhere new and learn something new and maybe please someone new. I get it. It'll all be new. It just doesn't scare us. Not like it does you. Scares is the wrong word. And fear isn't it either. Look, I don't mind dying. I've almost died many times. I've got the scars to prove it, but with getting wounded or getting hurt, at some point you heal. At some point you are able to get up and move on. But Look, I'm not even afraid of breaking my arm. What I'm worried about is somebody not even knowing what an arm is. If I came up to you and said, I lost my arm, and you look at me blankly and said, what's an arm? Well, that's what scares me. Let me try it from this direction. Used to be someone's wife. But what about before that? Cook on the high seas, but it was just for a little while and it was to get away from something. From what? Home. Well, it's what I called home. It wasn't really home. My parents died of the yellow fever before I was very old, and I was taken in by the neighbors. Oh, you know, out of the graciousness of their hearts, the neighbors took me in. I was worried, though. The new stepfather was too old, but there were these two nephews. And I'll be honest, I was always afraid I was going to be raped. The new family also had a slave, too, Jacob. And they made me work side by side with Jacob, day in, day out, back-breaking labor, labor without a moment's pause. So when I was 17, I talked to Jacob and we both decided to escape. So I dressed as a boy. And in those days, the only way you could get away safely was to go to sea, so we did. For all I know, Jacob could still be at sea. He loved it that much, but not me. One night I jumped ship at Galveston mainly because I was afraid those sailors were going to find out the cook that was a boy really wasn't a boy. And I took the first job I could get, which was on a cattle drive going east. And you know what? I was good at it. They liked me. They actually liked me. I could organize things. I could remember things and do it the way they wanted it done. And trust grew on both sides. And one day I told two of the drovers that I wasn't really a boy, that I was a girl dressed as a boy, but I could do the work of two men. And so they let me be. They let me become the job. Look, I understand change. And I understand change is inevitable. On one of those cattle drives, I met Tom Pike, my husband. He was a man among men. I'll never meet his like again. And we married. And I thought being a wife would last until I died. But there was this war. And we were almost, ironically, to the end of the war, only a few battles from the end when he fell at Wilmington, North Carolina. One time I went to that battlefield and I walked that battlefield, thinking that I could find some aspect of him, some semblance of him where he died. But I couldn't, there was nothing. There was just nothing. It was change. And so I went back to the cattle drive because it was the only thing I really knew. Say, this uh, machine you love so much, this telegraph, I think I figured out how it works. You have a code, don't you, made out of a series of hits and pauses. But this devil's rope, the barbed wire, <laughs> I'm losing my arms, and you two don't even know what I'm talking about. You're a ranch hand right now, but you're human. Who works? At this point in time, as a cowgirl, you've been a cook, and a wife, but now you're not, and you're still the same woman. Do you think he's gonna give up when the telegraph is out of date? We're having this philosophical conversation and we don't even know each other. I'm Levi, and I do telegraphy here in town. Well, you already know we came down from Henderson Spread. I'm Earl Johnson, this is Mrs. Pike, who heads up the Cowboys and Buckaroos. Janet Pike. Good to meet you. I'm Levi Gerns. Things are changing changing all the time. I'm probably the only Jewish guy here in town, but even that'll change too. Things change, but not the telegraph. I think it'll be here for a while yet. I can't think what would replace it. Maybe voices could go over the wire. <laughs> That's all we'd need. That's all we'd need. Talk to each other as disembodied voices. My mother used to say we'll fly like birds someday and maybe we'll do it. So, how about a nice trip to the moon? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think a stagecoach driver thinks about his life right now? Oh, like he's losing his arms. Yeah, I expect he does. 
But you know, he doesn't have to. He's not just a stagecoach driver. You know, things change. People remain. Nothing lasts forever. And I'm going to die one of these days, too. But until then, I'll live as loud as I can. And in the end, I'm not just a cowboy. I'm a man. And that, my young friend, is why you don't know what the buffalo smells like. I used to be a cook. I used to be a wife. And just now it occurs to me I'm going to die a ranch hand out here on the range. Once this damn wire is strung, will there be any cowboys? Well, certainly not cowpokes like me, because I'm the trail. I mean, this is what I am. I am a horse, a saddle, the dirt, and a whole lot of sky. I'm at home on the trail. I mean, even when I'm here in town, even when I'm here in town waiting for a train that's late, the trail is my home. Have either of you ever known a sailor? Well, they say a sailor is most at home when he's on the sea. A woman gets romantically involved with a man like that and she's going to come in second every time because his first spouse is the ocean. Well, the trail is like that for me. The trail is my version of the ocean. The trail is my home. Could you ask a sailor to leave the sea? Maybe not, but a man could leave the sea out of necessity if he had to. If he had to. You don't know what it's like to love a place so much that it gets in your bones, so that it's in your bones all the time, so that it can never leave you. I do. And I see exactly what it did to you. I still say you're afraid of this wire. Again, I'm only afraid of what the wire will do to this place I love. It already changed. You can't see that? You said so yourself. The buffaloes are gone. The Indians are gone. Next, we'll be gone. I get that. It's just the way life goes. Listen, my great-grandparents, they was born somewhere on the African continent. They came here, escaped slavery, tried living in Philadelphia, and they hated it. They tried other places, too. My grandparents, their son, went another way. He arrived in Chicago when it was just a trading post. I mean, now look at the place, building taller than trees. He knows it was different there once, more serene, less complicated, but it's still home to him, and he likes it that way. If they could talk, I wonder what the buffalo would say about you, Mrs. Pike. I would say that you're thinking about what most people are thinking about out here, but won't admit it. Incidentally, I believe your train and freight are late because they've been minus a brakeman since Kansas City. They're making do, I guess. As long as there's railroads, the job of brakeman is going to be critical. If you'll excuse me, I'll see what else is going on with them before they arrive. You know, maybe I'm wrong to hold on to so much. No. Memories are pretty important. They say, what you remember is what you want to remain. Me, I was born far away, and every day things change. New buildings, new roads, new, just always new. I mean, what was I going to hold on to? My father? Yeah, I guess. He was always there, more or less. But you know, he's going to die one of these days. And then what? Should I die too? Die when it's your time. You know, I think I hear it. And I believe it signifies the end of life as I knew it. You have a lot of life ahead of you, Mrs. Pike. But maybe not this one. Listen, I don't know anything about this barbed wire devil's rope. Let's just go down there and take a look at it. I'm imagining bigness, volume, big. Let's go down and assess it and see if we can figure out how to get it back to the spread. They'll arrive in 15 minutes. You can go on down now if you want. They don't have your whole consignment, though. The rest will come on the next train. So it's really only a one-man job? Where does the train go after here? Well, it's a regular route, down to San Francisco and then back east through here. I guess that's what I like about this job. There's constancy and variety together. People come, people go, just like the train. And if there's no one here, well, there's always a telegraph. You know, what we're about to do, fence in the range, section off the land, I have so many second thoughts about this. I mean, I'm thinking of the buffalo. 
But what about the livestock? What about the animals? What about the animals that don't want to be fenced in? What about the people that don't want to be fenced in? How about the animals that get tangled up in the wire, that get hurt by it and maybe die from it? Oh, I understand the prosperity angle. I understand that things will be better for some people. I mean, bigger stockyards, more money being passed around. Uh, Chicago will get bigger. And a guy in Philadelphia gets a job. I understand that. But what about these animals that get tangled up in the wire, that get hurt so badly that maybe they even die? Look, things are going to change. They're going to change for you and for me and for a whole lot of other people But once this first bit of wire is strung. Do you want these things to, to change? Do you want that stuff to happen? Well, how are we responsible for what will happen? Well, how are we not? I don't care if a thousand people are stringing the wire. Once that first little bit of wire is strung, no matter who strung it, they're responsible for what it does. They own what it does, good and bad. New replaces old, new replaces old, always new. But let's think about it. Is the new always better than the old? Maybe if we put better thought into it, we could come up with something better yet. I'm not asking you to be responsible for all of the things that happen or the things that are happening a million miles away. I'm asking you to be responsible for what happens here after you string that wire. Think about the buffalo. Think about me. Look, I'm just one man. I didn't make this wire, I didn't buy it. All I could do is string it. If I don't string it, it's gonna get strung by someone else. Tons of stuff is headed west. I can't stop it. Why are you asking me to stop something I have no control over? I'm not asking you to stop it. Again, I'm asking you only to think about it. Remember that once we fence the cattle in, we fence the buffalo out. Understand that, that I am thinking about what used to be, that there used to be buffalo, and we have to consider the livestock. Think about the buffalo. Remember me. How can I forget you? The cowgirl, who's good at her work, dependable, attentive to the details, a pleasure to work with, you're intelligent, a philosophical ranch hand. How can I forget you? Does that mean you're going somewhere right now? You know, I don't like this idea of dying out here on the range. I don't like this idea of dying. So yes, I've changed my mind. After all that talk about how you and the land are one, how could you then leave it? Because it's leaving me. Because there's no guarantee that in 10 years I'll even recognize this place we're standing in. Look, I have some decision left. I have some choice in the matter. Maybe I just want to go somewhere where I don't have the feeling that everything I love is leaving me. So what are you going to do? Catch the train. I'm the new brakeman. You said yourself I was good at my work. The brakeman? You? I can't see you for anything else than what you already are. Then what am I? Tell me. A cowgirl? A ranch hand? Someone who belongs here? No, the place is changing, and I'm just not going to recognize it. I have to find some place where I belong, some place where I need to be. Listen, I don't own many things. I don't have many possessions. Would you sell them for me and send me the money, keep some for yourself? I'll get you an address. I don't want to, but sure I can. And don't worry about getting the horse back. That's old Jack. He was born and raised at the Hendersons. He don't know anything else. I'll just give him a smack on the high end and, and he'll go home. And try to explain for me. Listen, they don't ride horses on trains much, so take this. I think you'll need it more than I will. You know, I have to think that all of this is coming out for the best. I used to be a wife, I used to be a cook, I used to be a cowgirl wanting to die out here on the range, but all of that's in the past. I think I just want to go on living as a person. Who's going to string this wire? You are. Just remember that it's going to have an effect. When you string that wire, you're responsible for what it does. Once you fence in the livestock, you fenced out the buffalo. Remember me. Remember the buffalo. Remember me. I won't. And I'll miss you. You'll see me from time to time. 
train goes through regularly enough. 